You are exalted above the names. Hallelujah. There is none like you. Hello, a very good day to you. My name is Sister Temitai. I'm a Christian content creator, and I'm here once again to share from the Open Heavens Daily Devotional that's compiled by the General Vasya of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor E.A. Adeboye. And the reason I'm sharing from this particular Christian book is because the Lord instructed me to do so as I prepare to enter into the year 2020. So this is my fifth year of sharing from the devotional, and that's why we call it season five. And all those videos from 2020 they are all loaded on my youtube channel my handle on youtube is timmy Agedo, which is right on the screen i would encourage you to visit my channel not only to view the old open heavens videos which are a great study guide but most importantly to view the open heavens for the current day and i know that will bless you exceedingly and while you're on my youtube channel very important don't forget to subscribe like comment and share god bless you as you do now pastor adeboye led me to christ in october 1997 a few years back when i was in the university of lagos nigeria in west africa and daddy will give you a few scriptures from the bible and the memory verse and that helps you to understand the body of the text praise god so let's go straight into the daily devotional today is wednesday september the 10th wednesday september the 10th and the title of today's daily devotional is receiving prophecies receiving prophecies receiving prophecies and on monday and tuesday today is wednesday so on monday and tuesday we started a series titled rejecting negative prophecies part one and two so just a two-day series and now we're talking about receiving prophecies so this is like a continuation or the icing on the cake you know so i would definitely encourage you to view the videos for monday and tuesday and i know that will bless you exceedingly god bless you so let's go straight into the daily devotional receiving prophecies <laughs> Praise God. And the first person that came to my mind is Zacharias. Zacharias, the husband of Elizabeth. And, um, you know, um, I, he just came to my mind. You know, um, both of them were, they were righteous. The Bible says they were righteous. Both of them were righteous. And, you know, um, they didn't have any children. You know, Elizabeth was barren. And this man, because they were righteous, they, they stayed together. It was not like... Um, Samuel's father, who went and married another wife on top of Hannah, Penaniah, Penana, Penana. But you know, um, um, Zacharias was a righteous man. He stayed with Elizabeth, and they were both old and advanced in age. And it came to pass that it was his turn to burn incense in the temple. And uh, when he went, and people were outside, they were praying. So he went in and he was burning incense on in the temple. And suddenly, Angel Gabriel appeared to him on the right side of the altar and said, You know, fear not. When he saw him, he was afraid, you know. Um, but Zechariah said, don't be afraid. God has heard your prayer and, you know, God is going to give you a son, you know, and he's going to be great. His birth will bring so much joy and he will go before him in the power of Elijah. I was talking about going before Jesus Christ, the Messiah, in the power of Elijah. Um, and he would turn the hearts of many of the children of Israel back to God. You know, he prophesied about this child that was going to come. These people were old. The Bible says they were advanced in age because with God, nothing shall be called impossible. Praise God. And <laughs> so receiving prophecies, Zechariah said to Gabriel, he said in the easy to read translation, he says, Zechariah said to the angel, how can I know that what you say is true? I'm an old man and my wife is also old. And, you know, talking to an angel is different from talking to God. God is very merciful. Angels are not, you know, they're merciful, but you know, they, they, are, they, they, and, uh, Gabriel said, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. And he struck, so that, anyway, so that Zechariah would not use his mouth to spoil that prophecy. Angel Gabriel struck him out of mercy, struck him dumb. So he was not able to speak anything negative until the child was born. Praise God. That's <laughs> negative prophecy. And it was, um, amazing the bible is such an amazing book i will thank god the bible is a gift it is the greatest gift that god has given to mankind that's jesus christ the word of god you know in printed form receiving prophecies so we're going to be reading from second kings 7 verses 1 to 17 second kings chapter 7 verses 1 to 17 i'm going to be reading from the new king james version and thus goes the reading of god's word then elisha said hear the word of the lord thus says the lord tomorrow about this time 
a seer of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel and two seers of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. So an officer on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Look, even if the Lord would make windows in heaven, could this thing be? Could this thing be? And he said, In fact, you shall see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. Now there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate, and they said, to one another why are we sitting here until we die if we say we will enter the city the family is the family is in the city and we shall die there and if we sit here we die also now therefore come let us surrender to the army of the syrians if they keep us alive we shall live and if they kill us we shall only die and they rose at twilight to go into the camp of the syrians and when they had come to the outskirts of the syrian camp to their surprise no one was there for the Lord had caused the army of the Syrians to hear noise of chariots and the noise of horses and the noise of a great army. So they said to one another, look, the king of Israel has hired against us the king of the Hittites and the king of the Egyptians to attack us. Therefore they arose and fled at twilight and left the camp intact. Their tents, their horses and their donkeys and they fled for their lives. And when these lepers came to the outskirts of the camp, they went into one tent and they and ate and drank and carried from it silver and gold and clothing and went and hid them. And then they came back and entered another tent and carried some from there also and went and hid it. Then they said to another, one another, we are not doing right. This is a day of good news and we remain silent. We wait until morning light. Some punishment will come upon us. Now therefore come, let us go and tell the king's household. So they went and called to the gatekeepers of the city and told them saying, we went to the Syrian camp and surprisingly no one was there. Not a human sound, only horses and donkeys and the tents intact. So the king arose in the night and said to his servant, let me now tell you what the Syrians have done to us. They know that we are hungry. Therefore, they have gone out to the camp to hide themselves in the field, saying, when they come out of the city, we shall catch them alive and get into the city. And one of his servants answered and said, please, let several men take five of the remaining horses which are left in the city. Look, they may neither become like, look, they may neither, need, they may either become like a multitude of Israel that left, that left, that are left in it, or indeed, I say, they may become like a multitude of Israel left from those who are consumed. So let us send them and see. Therefore, he took two chariots with the horses and the king sent them in the direction of the Syrian army saying, go and see. And they went after them to the Jordan. And indeed, all the road was full of garments and weapons which the Syrians had thrown away in their haste. So the messengers turned and told the king, the people went out and then the people went out and plundered the tents of the Syrians. So a seer of fine flour was sold for a shekel and two seers of barley for a shekel, according to the word of the Lord. Now the king had appointed the officer on whose hand he leaned to charge, to take, to have charge of the gate. But the people trampled him in the gate and he died, just as the man of God had said, who spoke when the king came down to him. So, and the Bible says, so it happened just as the man of God had spoken to the king, saying, two seers of barley for a shekel and a seer of fine flour for a shekel shall be sold tomorrow about this time in the gate of Samaria. Praise God. I like the part where, um, verse 6, for it says that for the Lord had caused the army of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses and the noise of a great army. So they said to one another, look, the king of Israel and the kings of the Egyptians, um, the king of Israel has hired against us the king of the Hittites and the king of the Egyptians to attack us. So the Lord caused the, okay. So there was famine in the land and, um, here comes prophet Elisha as prophets always do. They always show up in time of trouble. So there was pro there's, uh, famine in the land. And Elisha said, famine, there was famine in the land. There was no food. People were dying of hunger. Elisha said that by this time tomorrow, tomorrow by this time, that's in 24 hours. It says the Lord tomorrow about this time, a seer of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel and two seers of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. You know, ridiculous. Ridiculous. It's like saying that you get a brand new car for a pound. Do you get? So, 
ridiculous. <laughs> how, how can that be? You know, and um, that's to the common sense. And so when Elisha had prophesied that by tomorrow, by this time in 24 hours, there'll be a miracle. The, the, the king had somebody who, on whose hand, they called him the officer, on whose hand the king leaned. And he, made, he uttered a statement. He said, even if God makes windows in, in the heavens, could this thing be? So Elisha said to him, it will happen. And when your eyes will see it, but you will not taste of it. And in the end of this reading that we read, we find that, that actually when the, 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 the lepers, you know, when the Syrians had heard the noise from the Lord and they ran away, they left their tents, left everything, they fled because they heard the voice of an army. God made them to hear the voice of an army and they began to run. The Bible said the wicked flee when no man persuades and they ran away. So, and God, God was the one that made that happen because he wanted to fulfill the word of his servant. Yesterday we talked about God fulfilling the word of his servant and performing all the counsel of his messengers because Elisha was a prophet called by God. You know, so, and exactly as he said it, that's what happened. Praise God. So, but that man receiving prophecies, the focus now is on this man who said, even if God makes window in the heaven, windows in the heaven, can this thing that Elisha said, can it, can it come to pass? And Elisha said, it will come to pass. You will see it, but you will not partake of it. So when they plundered the, the, went to the Syrians, the camp of the Syrians and plundered, and there was food everywhere, you know, there was more than abundance. The, the king then gave the, that servant upon, that man upon whom he leaned on, he told him to take charge of the gate. So that the people were not rushing, but people were hungry. So when they saw him, they just trampled him and he died. So he saw it, but he did not partake of it according to the word of the Lord, according to the word of the man of God, receiving prophecies. Now the memory verse is taken from 1 Thessalonians 5.20. 1 Thessalonians 5.20 says, despise not prophesying. Despise not prophesying. That is, sometimes God gives prophecies that sound impossible to the human mind. And this makes some people doubt and miss out on them. When a prophecy seems too good to be true or difficult to believe, just keep quiet. Just keep quiet. Don't say anything against the prophecy because if you do, you may never see it fulfilled. In today's Bible reading, the minister voiced his unbelief in Elisha's prophecy. The prophecy came to pass, but because of what he said, he did not live to experience it. So daddy said, don't voice, we should not voice our unbelief. Now, all the prophecies that God would, would give us, they are always, they are always in the human mind. Your human, Our human mind cannot contain it. Because God is big and like when God says the virgin shall be for the son. How, 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 how is that possible? In human thinking, you know, with men, it's, and, and then the angel says, so the angel, the, the virgin asked, she said, how can this be saying that I know not a man? And the angel said, the spirit of the Lord shall come upon thee, the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. And said, for with God, nothing shall be called impossible. Shall, nothing shall, with God, nothing shall be called impossible. In other words, no word from God is void of power. So when God, when he talks, he, we talk, he, he, he talks like God. Because he is God, he will say, this time next year, you will have three children. <laughs> you know, according to, do you understand? So like, just like God said to Abraham, Abraham was a hundred years old. You know, that you're going to have a son, your wife, Sarah, will have a child. <laughs> you know, Sarah laughed. Sarah laughed. You know, Sarah laughed because when God talks, he talks as the God he is. He's God. He's big. In a song we sing in Nigeria, he's big, 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 large, 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 large. He's great, great, great. He's a great God. So he talks like God. And so that is saying to us that we must never voice our, our own belief. When it is tr tr too difficult, too, too awesome, just keep quiet. Or be like, be like Mary and say, be it unto me according to your word. Because when you voice your unbelief, you will not see it come to pass, is what that is said. You may not live to experience it. What we say and or do after receiving a prophecy matters. God told Abraham in Genesis 17, verses 4, and Genesis 26, verses 3 to 4, that he would be the father of nations and that his children would be as many as the stars in the sky. 
at that time he and his wife were already old and did not have children and even though abraham believed god and it was counted to him for righteousness that's in genesis 15 6 the prophecy was not fulfilled immediately when it appeared as if the prophecy was not going to come to pass sarah got abraham to have a child with hagar her handmaiden and despite and uh, to, uh, yes sarah got abraham to have a child with hagar her handmaiden despite this god told him in genesis 17 to walk before him and be perfect and repeated the prophecy this time abraham doubted in his heart that's in genesis 17 17 but he did not speak out nor did he try another alternative outside god's will god instructed him to circumcise all the males in his house as his sign of his covenant with him and abraham obeyed although he doubted god in his heart his words and actions did not express it later in genesis 18 god appeared to him and nine months after isaac was born if your mouth and actions don't negate god's promises for you no matter how unbelievable those promises sound you will see them come to pass so that is using Abraham as an example. So God made a promise to Abraham. And, you know, Sarah laughed. And if we use common sense, rightly so, because she was 90, you know, um, she was 90 and it, it, it didn't sound like it was going to happen, you know. And so, but because, because um, they thought that God had forgotten about it, it wasn't going to come to pass anyway, she went and got Hagar her handmaiden so abraham would sleep with sega and bear a child through hagar they wanted to help god to bring the prophecy to pass but hagar that was a mistake because they, they, they that was a mistake don't help god just leave god leave him alone just let him do what he will say i would do he let him do whatever his hand and his counsel have determined before to be done god is not a man that he should lie or the son of man that he should repent has he said will he not make it good has he promised and will he not do it so god he says, so shall be the word that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing wherein to I sent it. So God, <laughs> he cannot lie, in which is impossible for God to lie. The Bible says that by two immutable things, in which is impossible for God to lie. God cannot lie. What he said he will do, he will do it. The thing is, we must. the, the Bible says in Psalm 27 verse 1, it says, wait on the Lord, be of good courage. And he will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So that is saying that even though Abraham at, at one point, you know, Abraham said, oh, let Ishmael live in thy side. God said, no. Isaac, you know, it seemed like Abraham did not believe, but he added works to his faith. There are some things he was doing. You understand? God instructed him to circumcise all the males in his house, in his house as a sign of that covenant. He was already 100 years old. I'm sure he didn't believe, but he just went ahead and did what God said he should do. So he never voiced his own belief. And then God then also took him aside and said, you see the stars in the sky, so shall your sons be for multitude, your children be for multitude. So he allowed his actions. He still did what God said, even though in his heart, he didn't, he hadn't, it hadn't happened to anybody before. Had it been God had done it before, like now we have the example of Abraham and then Hannah and all those people. You understand? And, uh, you know, Elisha raising the dead and Elijah raising the dead and all those things. We've seen those examples. For Abraham, there was no example. It had not happened to anybody. So he didn't have, and that's why he's called the father of faith. Because in that circumstance, he still believed God. The Bible says it was accounted unto him for righteousness. So that is saying that although he doubted God in his heart, his words and his actions didn't express it. Later in Genesis 18, and that it says, if your mouth and actions don't negate God's promises for you, no matter how unbelievable those promises sound, you will see them come to pass. And so that's what we must not forget. So our words and our actions must not, we must never doubt. The Bible says, anyone that doubts, let him not believe, let him not think that he will receive anything. May God forgive us for doubting at any point in time. In Jesus' name. When God tells me something unbelievable, I immediately begin to repeat it to those he permits me to share it with. Wow. I don't give room for my human mind to process it and express doubts. I confess the prophecy repeatedly so it becomes real to me. When God told me he would build me a city, I could not even afford to build a small house. But I announced it to everyone who cared to hear. Today, he has fulfilled this prophecy when he showed me trailers bringing in cows to feed the crowd 
that will be attending our program, programs. I announced it to people, even though we did not have money to buy half a dozen cows today, that prophecy has been fulfilled as well. So this is what Daddy is saying. So Daddy says, when Daddy tells him something unbelievable, which always does, which God always, because he's big, God is big. So when he's talking, he's talking from the position of being God. Okay, so that is when, 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 when God says things like that, he repeats it. He says it out repeatedly and he shares it with those whom God has given him the grace to share it with, the, the privilege, the, the opportunity. Those he has permitted him to share it with because you can't share your vision with everybody. The Bible says we should not cast our pearl before swine or they will trample on it. So we share it with people who, who will help strengthen your faith. Who are on the same this 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 the level you are talking about? Talk the, the spiritual level you are talking from. Do you understand? So that are people you share it with, don't share it with with um swine, they will, they will trample on it. He says, and he confesses that prophecy repeatedly so that it becomes real to him. Hmm. And then that gives an example when God told him that he was going to build a city for him, which is which we know now, you know, where, where they have the Holy Ghost service. He announced it to everybody. <laughs> at that point in time, at that, at that time, Daddy said he didn't have the money to build a small house. He had got, He told them that God said he's going to build him a city. And when he was telling, he, when God showed him that a time will come when they'll be using trucks to bring in cows, because during the Holy Ghost service, they feed everybody. That the time will come when they'll be using tr trucks to eat, to bring in cows for, to kill, for people to eat during the service, the, the, the Holy Ghost Congress. You know, and he said that at that time, they couldn't even afford to buy a dozen of cows that 12 cows you know how much more trucks you know and he voiced it he never doubted it and it has come to pass so that is saying to us that we must never voice our own belief our words and our actions must never show that we doubt god you know, understand if our mouth and our actions must ne not negate god's promise for us no matter how unbelievable those promises see sound amen praise god so we must add works to our faith. We must believe God. We must believe God and understand that God is not a man. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your greatness, your, your surpassing power, your goodness, your mercy. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your, you are great and greatly to be praised. Thank you for the words which you have spoken to us. It shall not return unto you void. Yes, it shall accomplish that which you please in our lives and it shall prosper therein in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, remember the words upon which you have caused us to hope, almighty God. Thank you, Father, for your love. Thank you for your goodness. And we, Father, we pray any way which we have doubted your prophecies in the past. Please forgive us. Don't deal with us after our sins. Don't punish us after our iniquity because you are good and kind and your mercies endure forever. Remember also, Lord, according to your mercy and according to your favor, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We love you so much. You're so good and kind to us. And we thank you for Jesus and we thank you for the Holy Spirit. And we thank you for the prophecies that you have given to us. Father, Lord, we reignite them by the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you for today's open heavens. In Jesus' mighty name of prayer. Amen. Thank you so much for taking time to listen to me. I hope this blessed you. I'm sure it did. I'm very, very important. While you're on my YouTube channel, please don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share, and God bless you. And never get this sister. Take me time, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a beautiful, beautiful day. God bless you. There is no